What is up, Silver Hills kids, four, five, six, all stars, or anyone else in the grand interwebs who is here today? Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you guys are enjoying this lesson and the series we're going through. If you don't know, we're asking a big question. We're asking, what is the payment for sin? And the reality is, this isn't a fun question to ask because the answer is the payment for sin is death. But this question is based off of a verse. Um, and it's Romans 6.23, which says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Meaning that we may deserve death for our sin, but God gives us a gift. And we know a gift is free. We don't deserve it. We can just take it. And so we have the opportunity to take that gift. So today we're going to be talking about somebody who's using um, maybe that gift, that connection with God, um, to pray and ask and receive. And we're going to be talking about Hannah. Now, Hannah is a really cool Bible character. Um, she is known uh, just a little bit. She's got a little bit of section in the Bible. Uh, but she's known for her big, deep faith um, and her requests to God and praying to Him. So we're going to dive into that story today. I hope you guys are ready. Let's jump right in. All right. We're here. It's Bible story time. Let's dive right into it. Let's set the scene. Hannah um, is barren, which means she can't have a kid. Now, this is really hard for a lot of people, um, and especially back then in the time of the Bible. You see, having a kid was how you continued your family, how you carried your family line on. And for the people, uh, especially in Israel and in the Middle East in that time, carrying your family's name and legacy on was very important. So when you couldn't have a kid, that was very difficult. And Hannah could not have a kid. So obviously this was very hard for her, but she didn't lose hope and she prayed to God. So let's see what she prays. So we're going to dive into 1 Samuel chapter 1. So if you've got your Bible, turn it with me. In verses 10 and 11, it says Hannah was in deep anguish, which means she was very upset and very hurt. And she was crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow. O Lord of heaven's army, if you will look upon my sorrows and answer my prayers and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire life, and as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, he will never, his hair will never be cut. So we see that Hannah is very upset, but she doesn't turn away from the Lord. You see, when we're faced with trials, we have two options. We can run away from the Lord and try and solve it ourselves, and... We've seen the people of Israel try this a lot. It doesn't ever work. Or we can turn to the Lord. And, and we can be sad. And we can be upset. And we can be angry. And we can express these feelings to God. Because you see, Hannah, in the Bible, did the same thing. She expressed her frustration and her anger. But she said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. If you give me a kid, I will give him back to you. And guess what? He did. He answered her prayer and he gave her a son. Now, let's see what happens after that. Once Hannah finds out this great news, she goes into a great prayer. And that's going to be in chapter 2. So just flip right on over to chapter 2, and we're just going to read the second verse. Um, so let's look at it. It says, No one is holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. You see, guys, Hannah understood that God is capable of so much. When she says that God is our rock, it means that we can put everything on him and he will not break, right? He is our foundation. He is sturdy and he is good. Now, the reality is this prayer, this hope, um, this trust in God did not come from Hannah's single prayer. You see, throughout all of Hannah's life, I think prayer was a part of her life, that she spent time praying to God and seeking after him. And I want to show you guys an example. Say I've got a speaker. This is a big one. And I've got my phone plugged up to it, right? If I hit play on my Spotify, it's going to play the music. And we're going to hear that music. But what happens if I unplug the cord that it's connected to? Is it going to keep playing? No, of course not. You see, that is how our connection with God is. When we pray to God, it's like plugging in an aux cord, right? Uh, directly up into heaven, we plug this aux cord in, and it comes right back to us. And when we pray up to God, he sends stuff out of us, right? He grows our faith, he grows who we are, and he helps us live better and trust him more. But if we unplug that aux cord from ourselves, 
and try and do things on our own, we're not going to make the sound, right? We're not going to make the connection, and we're not going to be able to be with God. So why do I say that? Because at some point in our lives, we're going to be praying prayers like Hannah. We're going to be asking for things. We're going to be needing things in our lives, right? We're going to want to see a miracle. But if we're not praying now, if we're not connected with God now, how can we expect to connect well when we haven't ever done it before? So what am I asking y'all to do? I'm asking y'all to take time and pray. Spend time with the Lord. Set a timer every morning for just 10 minutes. Read his word and pray in those 10 minutes. And learn to be in the company of the Lord because when we're in the company of the Lord, he grows us and he builds us and he allows us to have a deeper connection with him. A prayer like Hannah's doesn't come off the bat. It's not a one-time thing. Prayer to God is forever and ever, and the more we do it, the better we get at it. And prayer is a hard, difficult topic to talk about because there's so many things. We face unanswered prayers, and we face prayers that are um, not answered how we want them to go. But the reality is when we trust God through His Holy Spirit, we allow Him to speak, and we just spend time with Him. We're able to pray prayers that are harder. We're able to hear God when it's harder. And we're able to see the effects of those prayers in our lives. So I want to challenge you guys this week. What can you be praying about? How can you connect closer? And how can you spend more time with God? Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, if you want to see more details about the Bible story, you can hang around. I'm going to have that play after. But if not, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next week. Bye. In a land called Ephraim, a man named Elkanah lived with his wife Hannah. Hannah was sad because she really wanted children, but she didn't have any. Every year, Elkanah went to the tabernacle to make sacrifices to God and to worship him. Hannah went with him. She prayed, Lord, if you give me a son, I will dedicate him to you. He will serve you all of his life. A priest named Eli sat nearby and watched Hannah pray. He couldn't hear her, but he saw her lips moving. Eli thought something was wrong with Hannah. I've been pouring out my heart before the Lord, she explained. So Eli replied, go in peace. May God answer your prayers. Hannah and Elkanah returned home and God answered her prayers. After some time, Hannah gave birth to a son. She named the baby Samuel. When Samuel was a little older, Hannah took him to Eli at the tabernacle. God answered my prayers, she said. Hannah pledged Samuel to serve God and she worshiped God. Then Hannah went back home and left Samuel with Eli to serve God. Every year, Hannah returned with a new robe for Samuel. God gave Hannah many more children, too. One night, Eli was in his bed and Samuel was lying in the tabernacle when Samuel heard someone call his name. Here I am, Samuel replied. He ran to Eli. Here I am, you called me. But it wasn't Eli. He told Samuel to go back to bed. God called Samuel three times, and each time Samuel ran to Eli. Here I am, he said. Eli finally understood that God was calling to Samuel. He told Samuel how to respond. So Samuel went back to his place, and God called, Samuel, Samuel. This time, Samuel spoke up. Speak, for your servant is listening. God told Samuel that he was going to judge Eli's family for their sin. Eli's sons served as priests in the tabernacle, but they were sinning against God. The next day, Samuel was afraid to tell Eli what God had said, but he shared God's message with Eli. As Samuel grew, God was with him. Everyone in Israel knew that Samuel was God's messenger. God used Samuel to share his plan with the nation of Israel. Hannah trusted God and sent Samuel away from home to serve God with his whole life. God sent Jesus from heaven to earth to be our savior. Just as Samuel used God's words to tell people about God, 
Jesus, the Word who became flesh, perfectly shows us what God is like.